Okay, hi everyone and welcome to our presentation today. So my name is Christina Lark and I work in career services at the college. So basically my job is that I help students with anything related to job searching. So once you arrive and you know perhaps you're looking for a part-time job, I would be able to assist with that as well as my colleagues in career services. And we're here to support you all the way through your program with anything you need related to your resume, your cover letter, questions you have about your job search or your career. And we even help you after graduation as well. So I'm just curious if people already know um, what program you're going into, feel free to share that. Uh, with us in the chat as I'd love to hear um, what program people are looking at joining. Um, but no matter the program, um, every single program at the college does have a career consultant who can help you with your job search. Um, so today I'm here also with Robert Collins from the London and Economic Development Corporation, who will be introducing himself a bit later. And I'm just going to start by talking about virtual job search and networking. So virtual job searching, um, this is something that we've really become good at knowing how to do throughout all the disruption of the past couple of years. Um, so we have some tips of how you can you know, start building your network and start looking for opportunities even just online. So some of the steps for an effective job search. Um, there are six steps here and we will go through each one in a little bit more detail today. So step one is knowing yourself, you know, thinking about your goals and what kind of work you would like to do. Um, step two is organizing all the materials that you need for your job search, which can include things like your resume, your cover letter, and even your LinkedIn. Step three is finding opportunities online. And then once you arrive in Canada, you can even go in person to find opportunities. Step four is actually applying for openings. Step five is keeping a record of where you've applied and who you've spoken to. And then step six is following up. So they're all important steps and we will talk a little bit more about each one. So the first step, know yourself. This is a little bit of self-reflection that tends to come at the beginning of your job search, where you would think about things like, what is your greatest strength? Right. So, for example, do you like working with customers? Do you like working more behind the scenes, you know, stocking shelves or inputting data? What kind of things do you like and enjoy? Um, is there an area that you know you don't want to work? You know, maybe you don't want to work around food, for example, or maybe you don't want a job that's too fast paced. So what are the things you don't like? Are there areas that you want to learn more about, right? So maybe you're coming to the college and you're taking a computer program and you want to learn more about computers and tech in Canada. Maybe that's where you'd like to find a job. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And would you consider moving? So these are all questions we can ask ourselves. And even I would suggest thinking, what will I be looking for right away? You know, maybe right away, you just need a part-time job and something to help give you some income while you're studying. And further down the road, you may have a different goal uh, that's more related to your career. So these are all things that we can think about. So once you have considered that, then it's time to start organizing your materials. And I suggest to organize your materials before you actually start applying to jobs. Um, it will help you feel prepared and ready. So here are a few tips. Uh, the first one is to clean up your social media presence. So think about what social media platforms you're on, you know, whether it's Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or whatever you use. Um, making sure that it's private and deleting or removing any content that you might not want an employer to see. It is fairly common that employers may um, Google or look up candidates on social media. Um, the last survey I read was that about three in five employers may look you up online. So you want to make sure that what they see would be professional um, and that they wouldn't see anything there that, that would make them question hiring you. So cleaning up the social media is a good first step. 
Next is updating your resume. So the resume is a very important uh, job search document. So you'd want to make sure your resume is up to date. It's targeted to the types of jobs you're looking for and that it would meet Canadian uh, resume standards. Every country is different, I find, in kind of what a resume would look like. So making sure that you have one that's more aligned with what we would do in Canada. Um, other things you can organize would be setting up your LinkedIn profile. So if you don't have LinkedIn, it's definitely something that I suggest setting up. It's a great networking tool that can help further promote your skills and help you connect with others and look for jobs. You also want to make sure you have a phone set up, which maybe you'll do once you come to Canada, um, but having a phone set up with a voicemail greeting and a professional email address for employers to reach you. So you can spend some time um, right away, you know, getting some of these things prepared, working on the resume, working on your LinkedIn. An additional document I would suggest to have that's not listed here would be a cover letter as well. Then you can do some additional research. So a couple things, you can research the industry you want to go into. Um, so we have a link here. It's the jobbank.gc.ca and then slash career planning slash search job profile. This allows you to look up different occupations in Canada and see what kind of skills they require, what the day-to-day -day tasks would be, what typical wages would be, and how many jobs are out there right now. So I definitely suggest looking this up for the professional field you'd like to go into, right? Say that you want to go into the business field, you can look up different occupations in business and learn more about them using this link. And it will just help you know more about your industry and the roles that you would be applying to. Another site I suggest to look at that I recently found is called Opportune Next. So it's opportunext.ca. Um, so for many, if you're you know, an international student, you may be looking at a career change. So maybe um, what you're doing now in your home country may be different than what you're going to do when you come to Canada. So this site allows you to type in um, your current profession and it will tell you some of the key transferable skills from that job that could be transferred into other occupations. So if that interests you, I suggest to check this site out as well. So in, um, in addition to preparing these documents, here are some tips to really help your application stand out. So if you find an employer that you would like to apply to, a great thing to do is some research. So research will help you understand the employer's needs and learn what's important to that organization. Then you want to connect it back to you and your skills and experience and think, you know, how do my skills and experience align with what this employer needs? Um, and then you put that together to demonstrate through your resume and your cover letter and your, your LinkedIn that you have the skills that would meet the employer's needs. So you're really showing how you can add value to the employer. Um, sometimes this means we may not mention everything uh, we've ever done, but we try and think about, you know, what are the most relevant skills or relevant pieces of my background that match what the employer is looking for. Um, social media is also a great way to connect with companies. So um, once you become familiar through your research with some companies that you might want to work for, you can use social media to connect with them. So liking their pages, um, a lot of companies may have a page on LinkedIn or Facebook or a Twitter account or an Instagram page. So liking or following them will help you learn about their marketing and their products. You may also learn about their mission, vision, or values, upcoming news with that company, and a lot of companies will share job postings on social media, so that will help you make sure you're not missing any postings. You can also engage with the company through liking or commenting on their um, content and engaging with them. So those are just other ways that you can learn about companies in Canada, even virtually, even from your home country, you can start doing this research and connecting with them on social media. 
So now that you have your materials prepared, you're ready to start looking for opportunities. And job boards are, are one way that we can do this. So the job board that's showing on the screen, this is something you will have access to once you're a student through Fanshawe Online. So Fanshawe Online is Fanshawe's online um, learning system. And once you get into Fanshawe Online under resources, there's a section that's called Career, Co-op, and CCR. And I definitely suggest to check that out as soon as you have access. We have all kinds of resources in there for you, including events, sample resume, sample cover letter, um, tips for your LinkedIn, and we also have job postings. So once you get in, you'll see this menu that says job postings. If you click on that, that is a job board that is only available to current students and alumni of Fanshawe. Anytime employers approach the college and ask um, us you know, about hiring students or alumni, we would post it on this job board for all students. So this is a great place to check for opportunities. And then you can use other job boards as well. So there are a few um, of our favorite job boards on here. So I've already mentioned the one that Career Services runs. You can also use LinkedIn. Um, you can use Night Hunter, which is specific to the London area. Uh, WorkforceDevelopment.ca. Uh, the Job Bank, I mentioned the Job Bank earlier is a great way to research um, professions, but it does also have a job search feature. Worksica.com, Indeed, it's a really common one, and LEDC.com, which is the London and Economic Development Corporation. Um, if you are interested, interested specifically in the tech industry or manufacturing, um, you can check out London Tech Jobs and London Manufacturing Jobs as additional sites as well. So these job boards help us see what's out there, what companies may be posting, and you can read and find some postings that may be of interest to you and then start applying um, for any that interest you. And typically the postings will ask for your resume and cover letter, which you've already prepared, or they may have an online application system that you would go through and you can input the information from your resume and cover letter into their online application system. So something we do want to let everyone know about is that unfortunately, sometimes there are fraudulent job offers out there. Um, and sometimes there are scams where people pose as employers, but they're not legitimate employers. So I want to go through some of the warning signs of online scams. So if you do come across something on an online job board that is showing one of these red flags and you're not sure if it's legitimate, you are not obligated to respond or take an offer from an employer if you're not comfortable with it. And as we mentioned here, when in doubt, reach out. So you can email career services at career at fanshawe.ca, or if you know who the specific um, consultant is for your program, you can reach out to them for them to help you know um, if it's a real job or not. So here are some of the warning signs. So if you're offered a job, but you didn't actually apply to it, interview or discuss with the employer, that would be a red flag. Most employers will require you to actually apply and they will want to meet with you before offering employment. Um, another red flag is if a company asks you to wire money or ask for your credit information. If they ask for personal information like your social insurance number or driver's license number, only get this if you're positive it's a, it's a real employer. If you're promised high pay for not much work, if they ask you to pay for a credit report as part of the application process, if you're told you have to pay for training or that you would not be paid for training, um, companies do have to legally pay you for training in Canada. If you're asked to cash a check using your personal bank account and then forward some of the money to a third party, or the salaries detail, salary details are not clear. So those are all things to look at for um, 
You can also use Google Glassdoor, um, visiting the company site. There is scamtracker.ca you can check. But as we mentioned, if you're having an interaction, you're not sure if it's legitimate, please reach out to career services. You are not obligated to respond to the employer if you don't feel comfortable. Even if they put time pressure on you, um, you do not have to respond. Okay, now beyond online job boards, there are also ways through networking that you can find opportunities, even virtually. So why is networking so important? I think we talk about networking in almost every um, job search presentation. And one of my biggest pieces of advice to new students coming in is find any opportunities to network. It will really um, help you. Why is that? So in Canada, more than 80% of jobs are not posted online, um, which means that they come through referrals or networking or contacts. So anything you can do to meet people and make contacts will help you find additional opportunities that may not be posted. So who is your network? You know, as an international student, that's such an important question because, you know, you're coming to a new country and you may not know a lot of people here. But I have seen many international students successfully build a network for themselves in Canada. So who could that be? Um, so you would be the center of your network. Perhaps if you do have family members, uh, maybe relatives who are in Canada, they may be able to help you. And once you arrive, you will meet a lot of new people. You'll make new friends. Um, you'll meet neighbors. You'll have classmates that you'll meet in your classes and co-workers from your part-time job. You'll meet teachers and different employers will come into your classes. You might join community groups or clubs or mentorship programs. There's so many activities and events happening on campus and in our community in London to meet people. And soon anyone and everyone can become part of your network. So there are lots of ways that we can meet people. So how to get started with finding opportunities through networking. So start with the people you know and ask for referrals or job leads. And don't be afraid to branch out. So, you know, you start with the people you know, but they may know other people they can introduce you to. Seek out new contacts to build your network and find new leads. And remember, networking is a two-way street. So connect back with people who connect with you and try and help others when you can, the same way we'd want others to help us. Um, networking can be formal or informal. It can be anywhere or anytime, even online. And one of the things that's really stood out to me over the past two years is that even even though we've only been able to connect with people over Zoom most of the time, is there's still been really amazing connections that we have formed. So don't let um, virtual activities, you know, don't look less on them. They can still be really powerful ways to form connections. So networking activities that can be done virtually. So utilize career services. You can meet with your consultant virtually or attend our virtual workshops to get started. Actively engage with your faculty um, when you arrive in Canada. If your classes are in person, maybe chatting with a professor after class, attending their office hours or participating in the class. Um, if the class is online, I definitely recommend turning your camera on. It helps um, the faculty know you, right? Reach out to other faculty and staff. Talk to recent graduates, ask for what we call an information interview. An information interview is where you would interview them, just wanting to know about their path. And that can be down over Zoom or on the phone, or once you arrive in Canada, it could be in person. Um, use LinkedIn to add people and, and reach out and message them. Take advantage of any networking events. Um, there's lots of virtual networking events, and we are seeing some in person too, so definitely a blend. And as mentioned before, connect with your company of choice on social media. So lots of ways to get started. And I would get started as soon as, as possible. Um, the more you start networking, the more comfortable you get with it, the more people you meet, the better you'll feel and you start to really build a strong network for yourself. You can also attend events as ways to meet people and find opportunities. So here are some sites you can use to find events. Um, there's Eventbrite, there's Facebook events, uh, London Chamber of Commerce, 
joining clubs. So I definitely suggest checking out the Fanshawe Student Union. Um, once you start at the college, they have different volunteering and clubs and events and other activities. Uh, meetup.com is a site where you can find people with similar interests and meet up together or go to events. Um, there is the LondonProfessionals.ca. Uh, 10,000 Coffees is a platform where you can meet other people. Um, any other groups like LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, um, and LinkedIn in general. So these are all ideas of where we can meet people and find opportunities. And then remember, whenever you're finding opportunities, apply to them, track where you've applied, and then follow up afterwards. Um, follow up can often go a really long way in showing that you are seriously interested in something. So that's the end of my portion. So um, I don't know if we want to take any questions now or if we want to go right into Robert's portion. What do you think, Crystal? If there is any questions, if you wanted to ask them now quickly, we can answer some of those questions. Uh, sure. It's a pretty quiet group today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if anyone has a question about the virtual job searching and networking, let me know in the chat. Um, and we can take a couple of questions. Okay, do you see one, any popular resume format? Yeah, so the resume format that we suggest in career services is called reverse chronological. So that's where you would, um, you know, start with your contact information. Um, then you would list some of your key skills. And then you would go through your education, starting with your most recent and going backwards from there. And then your work experience, again, starting most recent and going backwards. Um, do they have, a, is there a session on resumes included in Fanshawe Cares, Crystal? Not so much in the Fanshawe Cares, okay. but in Fanshawe Works. So that's yes. their most more in depth to sort of applying for jobs and job hunting and all that. And Fanshawe Works tends to uh, get a ton of students as well. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So Fanshawe Works, I know we are planning that in August, end of August, and I will be participating in that as well as the career services team. So if you have the opportunity to sign up for Fanshawe Works, definitely do. We do go through resumes really in depth at Fanshawe Works. Um, if you're not able to attend Fanshawe Works, though, reach out to career services and you can get one-on-one um, -on -one help from your uh, career consultant to work on the resume that way as well. Um, so somebody has asked, what kind of jobs do students do? And I see another question, do I have to stick to my area of specialization? So I'm, I'm going to try and answer those together. So um, you, what I see probably with a lot of students is that your part-time job could be different than your career goal. So I think the example that we shared in the chat is somebody said that, you know, their career goal is PSW, but does, could they work at a, a supermarket part-time? Yes, you definitely could. So common part-time jobs that I would see for students would definitely be customer service, working in retail stores, fast food, grocery stores, um, those kinds of things, customer service, even warehouse, um, which, which may not be the same as their professional career, um, but sometimes those jobs are, are a good way to get experience and they can work around your hour restrictions. Um, so you might do something different for your part-time job versus your career job just because of the hours. Um, a lot of career jobs are full-time, right? But when you're just looking for a part part-time job, cashier, customer service, those kind of things uh, tend to work really well and they can still help you get Canadian experience and practice your language skills um, and build your resume. So hopefully that answers. Um, so someone has asked if I help with co-op placement. So we actually do have a specific co-op team that would help with co-op placements. So um, career services is mostly for just your part-time job and then your job after graduation. And then cooperative education is a separate team. You would actually have a specific co-op consultant if you're in a co-op program uh, that helps you with co-op. Um, let me see, there's a few other questions here. 
someone asked, are there chances of companies visiting the college for job placements? Yes, we do often organize events through career services where employers request to come to campus and do info sessions or come into classes. We also run a career fair with about 200 employers every spring. So we do have lots of events like that. Um, sometimes they're virtual, sometimes they're in person. They will be on the career services events calendar. Um, someone has asked, are resume cover letter and interview prep services offered for free? Yes. So all of the career services are covered um, by your tuition. So you can access all of our services for free. Um, someone has asked about where can we find on-campus job postings? So for on-campus postings, um, you will be able to see them on that job board in Fanshawe online. Um, I also suggest to look at the Fanshawe Student Union um, on their site. They sometimes post them. I'll put that in the chat. It's fsu.ca um, slash jobs. That might be good to check out. Um, I see someone asked, can we access career services office before classes start? I have worked with students before who, you know, within maybe a month of starting. Um, you may not have all the access through Fanshawe online until you're actually a student. So sometimes we are a little bit limited in that you won't be able to view all the postings and resources yet. Um, but if you do want to, you know, have a chat um, start working on your resume. I definitely have worked with students before, um, just a couple of weeks even before they start, just as an introduction to career services. So that could be an option for sure. Okay, so great questions. <laughs> so I don't want to take up too much of Robert's time. So maybe I will turn it over to Robert at this point and I will stop sharing my slides here. Thank you. It's always so great. When, yeah, what uh, a great presentation, it. Christina, and uh, and also some questions. And perhaps you can look in the chat while we're we're going through uh, my slides uh, yeah. to see if there's some other ones you want to pick up after my my presentation. Yeah, absolutely. You'll you'll see that the that 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 I'm the the. Uh, the title for my for this little component is connecting for career success. You know, when you come from overseas, you bring with you that great international experience, which we're in Canada. We're we're appreciating even more because from London, Ontario, we're serving a global market. As well, uh, you will be developing fantastic skills and connections at at Fanshawe College, uh, one of Ontario's leading colleges. But I want to point out to you, it's not only what you know, it's who you know. And so making those personal connections, as Christina pointed out, is a key component for your ongoing career success. But just to quickly tell you, the London Economic Development Corporation is the leading economic development agency for London. Our job is to bring new investments and, and new companies to London, to tell a story about them through our marketing and communications, and also to make sure that we have a vibrant workforce, which is where you come in. And I wanna share a couple of things which I think are really important for you to know. Um, Christina mentioned uh, the workforcedevelopment.ca site. Today, I just looked at it, there are over 6,000 400 job postings right now, including a lot of part-time roles and a lot of, and, and across the whole spectrum of opportunities. And by the way, that's an aggregator. It pulls from about 23 different sites. The second thing I want to point out is the London Census Metropolitan Area, over 550,000 people, what is the fastest growing census metropolitan area in Ontario? So our population has grown significantly, but our unemployment rate is still the lowest it's ever been at about 5.5%. Uh, so I wanna assure you that employers are keen to meet you, 
to find out about your skill sets and especially those skills that you'll be learning from Fanshawe College that are directly re relevant to the local labor market. Next slide, please. To remind you where London is in a key location, uh, you will see that we're very proximate to the major cities of Toronto, Detroit, but, I, but we have 180,000 consumers within an, an eight hour drive of London. London's a regional center, major hospitals serving Southwestern Ontario with great research, full range of services. We are a supply chain um, uh, center. Uh, we are attracting much larger employers. By the way, really good news. You'll hear that Amazon is developing a major site that will be bringing on two, uh, 2,000 workers starting uh, later this fall, starting in for January. Maple Leaf Foods is just finishing a major plant, which will be hiring 1,400. And we have lots of other opportunities that are just, just uh, opening their doors for employees. So in addition to those jobs that I mentioned, that are already posted on that site. There's many, many more to come with a whole variety of different skill levels and experiences. Moving to the next slide, please. So also to emphasize that our population has been aging rapidly, as you can tell from, the, from my picture on the screen, the, which means that there are many more people also who will be retiring from, from the workforce. Uh, also to, to remind you, that approximately 22% of us also came from somewhere else around the world. And by the way, I also came to London, Ontario as an international student. So I also feel that, uh, that I've, I've experienced some of your journey, even though it was a long time ago. Next slide, please. I do wanna caution you that one of the things that uh, I have found from many uh, job seekers is that they, they tend to focus on just the larger employers. So yes, we have in, in we have all of those big brands, say in accounting, whether it be Ernst & Young or PwC, um, Deloitte, et cetera. Uh, and, and we have all of those big brands. Uh, we are home to 3M Canada, for instance, which runs all of the Canadian oh, operations. So, but basically though, Canada is the home of small, and medium businesses. And that's where there's an awful lot of growth and, and flexibility and where they're expecting employees to not only have a particular skill set, but also to be able to relate well to other employees, to be team members, to be flexible and not just be specific around their, their, their role title. And when, when you're approaching work in Canada, it's always, uh, useful to have the perspective of how will your skills, your energy, your experience, your insight, your personality, how will it help that business? Because that's really what employers are looking for when they connect with you. Next slide, please. So as Christina mentioned, um, but I'm gonna share with you that this is what a recent survey of local employers said. How do they recruit? So the first is from word of mouth or personal contacts. So it's who they know, who then may refer you to them. So it's always important to bear that in mind. They are now, and this is increasingly so, using online job boards and postings. They are also using more and more social media to tell their story and to connect with you, and then how you connect with them. And then, of course, how you apply uh, successfully, having done your homework uh, to, the, to the company's own internet site. And by the way, really important to not just send a, uh, a generic uh, cover, cover letter or, or resume. You really need to, cut, to do that research and customize before you would apply. One of the questions I have is larger companies, especially have an applicant tracking system. And so often they may have your name and whether they've looked at your app, looked at your early uh, resume on file and then, then they may not look. 
so quickly the next time you apply because, because they said they've already looked. So a caution about really doing that, that well first time. Next slide, please. So just to emphasize some of those same points that Christina said, but I really want to say that the most important is to really focus on that research before you make connections. Of course, then having that resume, having that, that professional photograph, that LinkedIn profile, making sure that Christina mentioned that you've cleaned up your social media. And, and the, the really key point that she mentioned about tracking your path. Every time you connect with a company, with an individual, to make sure that you're keeping perhaps an Excel spreadsheet that's telling that story, who it was, when it was, what, the, what advice they gave, and then, how, and, then, uh, and then your opportunity to follow up. By the way, it is better to have a few quality relationships which you manage well, rather than the lot that you just sort of um, make an initial connection but never really follow through. But if you've done your research, and by the way, I do suggest that you, that you identify three to four of the larger companies that, you, that might interest you from your, from your particular discipline that you're coming, but then add those six, seven that are in the small or medium, and then start to really follow them, really sort of figure out their, their profile, their connection. LinkedIn allows you, if you once you to also find not just the human resources area, but the, the manager of the area that you might be interested. So you might be, uh, if you're if you're say for instance in nursing, you might be looking for a nursing manager within a hospital. Or if you're in finance, you might be looking for the finance or administrative manager to make that connection within a particular company. Uh, moving to the next slide, please. Just to always, as I meant, as uh, to re-emphasize some of those uh, useful resources. The LEDC Guide to London, by the way, that goes over working in London, playing in London, living in London, a really good orientation to our city. Those, those sites, London Tech Jobs and London Manufacturing Jobs, are, are really convenient for you to initially see the company, the kinds of roles. And by the way, when we say a tech jobs company uh, or a manufacturing jobs, they will have jobs in supply chain. They will have jobs in finance, marketing, uh, communications, human resources, all of those. Uh, our business directory is very useful because it not only lists companies by size, and by what they do, but it also has a mapping function. So you can see where they are in and how proximate they are to London, to uh, the different Fanshawe campuses, whether it's downtown London South or Oxford Street, or uh, actually through the workforcedevelopment.ca map that you can see, they actually covers also the, lo the locations um, from, from Woodstock, St. Thomas. Uh, some additional resources that LEDC working is helpful. The Federal Job Bank, in addition to the, to the area that Christina mentioned, they have a function called Job Bank Wages. You can put in uh, uh, under that Lon the London region, and they will sh share with you the low, medium, and high wages for every job title. So that is very useful for you to find that information. We mentioned Night Hunter earlier on, which is, which is a great partner with LEDC. CharityVillage.com is a site where if you're looking to work in the not-for-profit sector, that, all, that then also uh, um, is a very useful site for you to explore opportunities there. The Fanshawe Career Services, of course, is the mothership. That is where all of those services and, and I do encourage you to engage, to use them fully and, and to really take their advice to heart and, and to really make sure that uh, you use the skills and, and expertise uh, that they have. 
salaryexpert.com is very useful because it will show you what the relative uh, uh, what what a relative wage is and what its purchasing power is in a particular community. So for instance, if you're starting as a human resources assistant in London at say $55,000 a year, what will, how, how much of that will you be spending on accommodation versus how much of that will you have as disposable income to enjoy your, to enjoy your lifestyle? Really important to use that tool. And by the way, I wouldn't mention it if it, if it didn't show that London was a very reasonable uh, community in terms of both its, its wage structure and its living costs. Moving to the next slide. So just uh, to, to, to re-emphasize some of Christina's points, always refine your standard resume and cover letter temp template to customize it to a company. Spend a little bit more time when you're actually looking at a particular company to really look into the, to the, to the job description, to really think about what the skills are behind the words. Think of yourself in that job. What would I be doing in a given day in that job? And then sort of match some of your skills and international experience, as well as what you're learning from Fanshawe College to that uh, exercise. As I mentioned earlier, and I'll, I'll repeat it again, do an employer research and, uh, and identify your top 10. And as I mentioned, I would prefer that you try to, to because I, I'm finding it's more successful for people to concentrate, uh, um, to have at least a balance between those larger companies and smaller ones. And then let's get started with those information interviews and networking. And by the way, the information interviews are trying to make sure that you're actually talking to a hiring manager or a knowledgeable person within a company and not uh, just the human resources who are gatekeepers really for organizations, even though they do a very valuable job. Um, and because that's part of my experience as well. Moving on to the next slide. So here are some tips for when you're meeting somebody in person. And you'll see it has that, that uh, down the, the left-hand side there, it has that expression soften because that's what you're doing you're really softening up the relationship so you're smiling genuinely you're asking open-ended questions about the person the company their their interests but you're also managing how you're paying attention you're, you're making sure that you you're, you're, you're that you're leaning forward to pay attention to them you're actually managing that personal space uh, so, for instance, I'm an angler, so that means I'm a little less comfortable with people being very close to me, but others are more comfortable with that. But your job as a networker is to manage the comfort of the person you're networking. So, therefore, with, say, with eye contact, eye contact is uh, very important, but you have to be aware that there's, there is there's some cultural differences between how acceptable that is and as well between, uh, between the different genders. So it's, yet again, as the networker, your job is to make sure the other person is comfortable. And you can tell that by their, their, their movement, their, 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 their comfort with maintaining your, your gaze, et cetera. And of course, the one key thing to do is to continue to use their name to make sure that you're pronouncing it correctly. And by the way, I do encourage you to use your real names wherever you come from around the world. Uh, per, my personal preference is that it's my responsibility to learn how to pronounce your name uh, and, and, and to encourage people uh, and to give them tips on how to pronounce your name and even to share if there's some story behind the name that will also helps enrich uh, the, the relationship but between you and them. Then moving to the next slide, please. So the same kind of thing really applies in how you actually connect by using, um, an, uh, by, by, by connecting virtually. So, so think about the tone of your email. Think about your greeting. Think about how you've, you've researched somebody on LinkedIn you've noticed something really interesting about their career and some of their accomplishments. 
very, very briefly um, to, to, uh, to be part of that sort of warm introduction. Yet again, to be able to answer some, to ask some, some open-ended questions around the company, its directions, uh, some of the key, air, uh, key skills uh, they're looking for in, in a successful employee and some of its overall uh, goals and directions. Try to keep those, some, some of us come from different cultures where we use a lot of words, try to keep it sort of uh, short to the point so that you're actually in the next point being time sensitive. You're actually managing uh, the individual's time. And then um, sh show that vitality by not only um, when you email and somebody responds back to you, making sure that you keep that, that connection, connection going. And remember that you're tracking that in, in, that, uh, in, 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 your, uh, in your records of the, of the connection. And when they offer you advice about uh, and or that they may give you another connection that they suggest that you talk to, or always follow up with them, letting them know how you've used their advice. Uh, and it might have helped you with your course selection. It might have helped you with an essay, with a with a report you were writing. It might have helped you in many different ways. But let them know how the information you shared has been impactful for you. And yet again, uh, please continue to use their name and to to respond. Uh, clearly and effectively and warmly. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, just when and how should I start job searching? It is continuous. So uh, I just want to let you know that you should be starting all of this preparation work now before you come to the country, that you could st actually start making those connections. But what, when you're here in London, and we're really looking forward to seeing you, make sure that you're continuing to, um, to continuous uh, job search is a lifelong activity. In other words, you should always be having a current resume, always thinking, not, not necessarily about changing jobs right away, but being prepared to be resilient as labor market forces change, et cetera. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you in London and seeing what further questions uh, this presentation has, gener has generated. Um, so back to you, Crystal. Well, I was gonna, well, as I say, your job search, it uh, starts today and never stops. And if we could, and by the way, this is one of just my favorite resources. Uh, it's called the two hour job search um, because it actually gives a particular methodology around that, that around networking, which I find personally very, very effective. The particular book is under $20 on Amazon. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, Steve Dalton, uh, to me, is, is, is one of my favorite job search uh, gurus. So thank you very much for the presentation. And, and uh, Crystal, uh, uh, let, let's see what, what, what uh, other questions uh, and or the ones that uh, Christina's now had a chance to see in the chat to respond to. That's great, Robert. I just wanted to mention, um, I, I mentioned in the chat, um, I really appreciate what you said, Robert, about using our real names and mm -hmm. learning how to pronounce them. I agree that that's so important. So I wanted to let people know that there is a newer feature on LinkedIn um, where you can actually record how to pronounce your name. And it comes up right on your own LinkedIn profile next to your name. There's a little icon and then people can click on that and they can actually hear you saying how to pronounce your name. So I find that really helpful. Um, I often check if I'm meeting with somebody and I don't know how to pronounce their name. I will check their profile and, and hear the pronunciation and practice. So that's a really useful um, feature uh, that we can use. So I just wanted to let everyone know about that. One thing I wanted to build on actually from, from your presentation, Christina, was when they're looking at um, uh, different uh, org organizations and clubs, et cetera, in, in most of the programs that you'll be taking at Fanshawe, there is a, probably a professional association 
associated with that. And often they will have student memberships or student clubs associated with those. So for instance, if you are human resources, you can join the, the local chapter of the Human Resources Professional Association as a student member, attend some of their events, connect with them. And so that's a really important way to identify for each of your career tracks, what are those organizations and to get connected with them earlier, because as I mentioned, they often have cheaper rates and they often will often have things like student outreach committees or whatever, so they wanna connect with you. As I mentioned, it is a very vibrant job market right now. So, so employers are keen to connect with you, but, th but think about the different means that they've, they've established to make that happen. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to put in the chat as well, just a link to the contact information for the career consultants at Fanshawe, which goes through each consultant in which programs they support. Um, so depending what program you're in, you can hopefully find your consultant. Um, if you're not sure who your consultant is, you can message us at the general email. It's just career at fanshawe.ca and let us know what program you're in and we will help you connect with the right person. Um, you can definitely wait until you actually arrive in London. I know it's such a busy time uh, moving, but if you if you did have something you wanted to connect about sooner, um, you could reach out and see what if something could be set up sooner if needed. So I think if that wraps up all the questions, we will let everybody get that extra five minutes back to your day. But thank you so much, Christina and Robert. These sessions are so helpful for our students prior to coming in to, you know, to give them a really great start. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. I look forward to hopefully seeing everyone in person in a couple months and wishing everyone all the best. Yes, and same here and looking forward to seeing everybody working in the London region very soon. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. We'll Bye. see you tomorrow.